Hey everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery back here in our ATA 2021 virtual studio today. And we have with us Randy Groff from Tack Veins. Randy, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Glad I could be. So I, out here on the table in front of me, Randy, I have a selection of the different tack drivers and matrix. Uh, but what's different and unique about these are these cool colors. Tell us what you got here. Um, so we wanted to develop um, some unique colors mostly. So I came out with the, the olive drab green, like an OD green. Um, you know, I know Matthews just came out with their, their ambush color last year. It's a, it's a pretty close match to that one. And then the tan is just one that I came up with that's just a unique color. More than anything, um, you know, I tell you, Toyota gave me the idea as much as anything, just because <laughs> I feel like you see so many of those trucks in that color and, you know, desert tan tactical kind of look, just to have yeah. something different to, to kind of have a stand out a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely cool. And you have that, so I've got... Uh, what do I got here? I got Matrix 225s, Driver 225s, Driver 2s, basically everything, all your sizes. You you offer that in all of the tack veins. Absolutely. Yeah, it's basically just two new colors for each one of our profiles. Um, you know, and at this point, I mean, I feel like we have a profile that will pretty much cover every type of archery or every type of arrow. Um, yeah. That was a goal that we had for, for last year to get that going. Gotcha. I have not the new veins, but just some on 3D arrows. I got some Matrix and indoor. I got fletched up with some driver 3.75s. For those people out there who may not be familiar with tax, tell us what makes them unique and different and special. So like the main selling point is uh, a lot of people will feel as soon as they fletch some up or feel some is that they're considerably stiffer than other veins on the market. And really what that does is bows are getting faster and they've only gotten faster over the last several years. And what happens is, is when, when they're forced into the, into the wind at a high rate of speed, you know, on a helical or otherwise, they basically start flapping if they're, yeah. you know, too flimsy. Um, so that has some benefits, you know, um, we won't deny that, but um, we do find that the stiffer material can really start cranking that arrow and start, you know, getting a lot of revolutions before it gets to the target. Um, so like a couple things that you definitely always want to do because you're not getting that flapping and that parachute type effect is you don't want to fletch them with a straight clamp. You know, that's not going to work. You want to definitely fletch them with a helical clamp. Or if you're using like a jig, like a Vein Master Pro from Last Chance, um, you know, I know like Levi, he shoots it on two degrees. Um, I generally shot them on three degrees with the Last Chance. And what that does is that is obviously going to start that spin right away as soon as it leaves the bow and get like the fastest arrow recovery, you know. Um, right. But one of the biggest things is that they'll maintain speed down range. So like if you, if you do some testing through a chronograph at longer distances, you'll definitely find that they will maintain their speed. So if you're losing, you know, 15 to 18 feet a second, by the time you get to 20 yards, you know, that's a lot of speed and a lot of penetration, you know, so that that's definitely one big advantage that we've got. And also for hunting, then they're, that also makes them much quieter too. So th both of those were things I noted. The, f the very first time I shot them is I went from a two, the, a very standard two inch high profile vein that a lot of hunters shoot. And I went to two, seven, five drivers and my pin gap really shrunk from 30 out to 60 yards. I have five pins. So they're set out to 60. That's where I saw the shrinkage, my tw uh, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. Uh, I was definitely gaining some speed there. And, and like you mentioned, the quiet, I had my brother-in-law shoot it and I went and stood down range and they are definitely quieter. So the performance is incredible on these. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing that, uh, I mean, we've got them set up with a lot of different people in the industry that are shooting them now. I know all of the, the Drury's shot them this year. Um, the oh, bone okay. collector guys all shot them. Um, I've, I've had quite a few conversations with a few different people there and they, you know, they're basically saying like they can have deer all in a food plot or something and literally will, um, you know, they'll obviously only be shooting at one of them. And the right. only deer that'll move is that one. 
You know, How so it, it shows that they're hearing the arrow. They hear the arrow. They're, they're not necessarily hearing the bow. And, you know, so that's what they have told me is that they're definitely noticing a difference that they're getting less drop, you know, from these deer when they're shooting them now with tack veins this year. So that yeah. was a very exciting to hear. Um, that was <laughs> definitely the goal. So, <laughs> so uh, Randy, let's talk about the preparation uh, for fletching these arrows um, because it's not unique um, but not all veins you fletch in this fashion. You have to, there's an extra step that you folks recommend. Yeah, exactly. Um, I do, you know, tr any troubleshooting with that people need, I'm always happy to do it. A lot of times I'm emailing with folks if they have issues, um, you know, and then if I, if we got to get on a call, we can always get on a call. I help people a lot, you know, when needed. Um, most people I talk to will tell me that they've been fletching for X amount of years and they've never had this issue. Um, I've, I've been around some veins for a couple of years and you know, what's the number one issue that you have with any vein adhesion, <laughs> you know? So like yeah, yeah. If, if there's something a little bit different about them, then we just have to like, we're trying to get the message out on how to get them to, to work well. But um, you know, there are, tons of people that are that are fletching them they're like man when i put them on they're like cement you know they yeah. literally can't come off um so just a couple quick pointers that i definitely want to point out that i think that will help um and this is based on things that i've dealt with people in troubleshooting and just some of the common trends um like one thing um like with a bits and burger again like always use a helical clamp a straight clamp is not going to work well um, not only is it not going to contour to the shaft well, but it's not going to give you a lot of revolutions on the on the arrow either because right. the, the, that parachute effect does help to correct the arrow some, but you're giving up speed in return. So yeah. to maintain your speed but also get that arrow correction, the helical is really where that comes into play. Um, and so when you are fletching with them, the number one, one of the number one things is definitely make sure that if you're using like a bits and burger that you, you don't want to push the vein the entire way into the clamp. Right. You got to leave a little bit of a gap. It's a stiffer material. Um, so with that stiffer material, you're definitely going to have to have somehow it's going to have to contour to the arrow. And yeah. so if you're pushing it all the way up in there and as low profile height wise as our bases are there's no give there's no con there it won't give you know right. so i had to make them thinner so that they would flex down to the shaft because mm -hmm. of the stiffer material um so that is definitely one thing that will really really help people um Another thing, too, is like, so with the primer pen, uh, one thing I did not write in the instructions, which it has extremely detailed instructions on it, um, that if you take it, as soon as you get it out of the package, if you put it tip up and press, the, let the air come out, that will oh, definitely yeah. help. Because a lot of guys, you know, as it changes temperature, um, it definitely can get some some air in there and, and basically a little bit of pressure. So if you're, if you're facing it down, when you first do that, it's going to come out a lot. It's going to come out fast. <laughs> this stuff is, is uh, three times thinner than tap water, you know, as far as the viscosity. No so it comes out fast. Um, but what I do is I always have a, a post-it note and just like a paper towel, you know, handy. So that way I can check the moisture level on the post-it note on, on a table, which try to bring this down. It's there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so basically like right there, I've got nothing. So I'll generally press a little bit out. I'll generally roll it across the paper towel just a little bit, check it again. And like, I've got, I don't know if you'd be able to see it, but yep. Basically, like a up to five sixteenths is the perfect size for that dot. If it's bigger than that, it's going to be too much moisture, you know, or too much uh, of the liquid. And yeah. what happens is when you go and you put this on the vein itself, you're basically going to get you're basically going to get liquid going out around the bases and down into the clamp. It'll be on your clamp for the next time you put a vein in there, and and that has caused a few issues. Um, so that's definitely something to avoid. 
Um, the other thing that you saw that I did is literally just make one swipe. One no swipe. Rubbing. I wrote on here, more is not better. That truly is the case. Right. If you take this and you've got that five sixteen quarter inch to five sixteenths dot, and you start on one end, make sure that you're like kind of covering corner to corner, and you make one nice smooth swipe. That is literally all you're going to have to do. At that point, you can take your glue. I like to put it on my pinky finger and just kind of hold it as like a guide. Right. And I, I definitely recommend making one straight bead. Um, I don't recommend smearing. Um, I've, I've, I've heard of a few issues with that, that that haven't worked quite as well. Yeah. And, you know, this is just a standard bits and burger. You know, again, helical clamp. I do have the, uh, the Zenith upgrade kit on this, which I think okay. is really slick. Uh, I think it's from uh, 60X. Yes. Who promotes those now. You know, yep. so what I do is I do hold some pressure and then also hold the backside, you know, with my knuckles or once a vein's on there, I'll hold it, you know, on either side of the vein like this just to give yeah. it a little bit of pressure. And then I like to let the jig sit, not touching it for at least like two Mississippi. And what that <laughs> does is you're when you're pressing, you're moving. You know, whether you right. like it or not, you're moving. Yep. So that just allows us to make sure that it's not moving at all. And it's going to be sitting there by itself after you already applied that pressure. And then another key thing, I think, is when you have the, the right amount of glue, there sh you should have a little bit coming out either side. And right. so take the tip, roll that Q-tip and wipe down each side of the, sh of the vein and not only does that seem to really seal off the edges, um, yeah. it makes a nice, clean fletch job, you know? Sure. I know I, I can't stand to have glue all over the place like, you know, <laughs> like, a, like I welded them on, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I can say, Randy, uh, there's nobody who's messier at fletching than me. And I have had no issues using the tack veins. They've worked for me. Like you said, you get them on there, they stick like iron. So the process, and you went through a lot of steps there, but for folks who are thinking, man, that seems like a lot. It isn't because if I could do it and not have problems, anybody can. Yeah. It's that simple. <laughs> I kind of, I, I draw it out for this, sure. but I mean, it does not take me long to, to right. fletch a dozen arrows, you know, and, and literally they're on there. I've had, a lot of people send me pictures of like, you know, a vein, one vein on an arrow that's just all mangled up. I'm like, what is this? When I first started getting them, and it turns out, well, here they're grabbing them with pliers and showing like it will not come off. I'm like, okay, oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Once they're on there and you got them set. Yes. Those things are rock solid. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the the offset is key, especially with the bits and burger. So like if you have what I do is I always do a dry run without glue first, yep. you know, and that's the, the standard for any vein, but it's a little bit more critical with the, the way our bases are to make sure all four corners of the veins base hit the shaft at the same time. So right. as long as you've got that, that's definitely something that is going to help considerably because the glue only dries on the absence of air. So if you're getting air in underneath this thing, it's not going to cure, you yeah. know, so you definitely have to have that completely. So. Awesome. Great fletching lesson in, in addition to checking out these new colors from tack veins. We appreciate that, Randy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Glad to do it. Um, so one thing that we did this year also in addition to the new colors is um, I wanted to develop a wrap um, that, you know, will be made for every diameter of arrow. Um, so it, I thought it was going to be pretty simple, but it was a lot of work to figure all of them out. But I've got them at this point. We got a pretty unique design. It's like a, it's like a topo design kind of with like the, um, you know, each of our profiles, but then like kind of goes off with the extra lines with like the topo design. Yeah. And it's just something unique um, that, that we could have for tack so that somebody doesn't get these and they're like, well, I got these for my X cutters and I just, I just chopped the, chop the logo off, you know, right. and then you got a plain white wrap, you know? <laughs> so I wanted to have that, uh, something like that. So I do have one for every profile, literally from X tens, the revelation, um, you know, any, any nano real small yeah. diameter stuff 
all the way up to 27s in all of the popular sizes. Um, I'm working on like some more sizing charts that are going to be uploaded on the website. Um, I also have like on our packaging, I'm going to have some like dots that you can literally put an arrow up against and confirm which size you need just as a gotcha. little or simpler way for people to find, find them. Um, but like that is one is arrows that I hunted with this year, but it's got that design on it. Um, nice. And then also the, the OD green veins. Um, one thing with our wraps is I designed them so that our logos would be on either side when it's clipped on the string. So like gotcha. when you actually, you know, wrap one of our, you know, wraps on the shaft, I definitely recommend turn your knock receiver or turn your knock on your jig until you can get it to where your spacing is going to end up where you always straddle the seam, you know, that seam that goes across being that our bases are really low profile like that. If you go across that seam, it's going to have a little bit of a dog leg in it. Yeah. It's not going to help anything. So definitely avoiding that is going to be key in my opinion. Um, So I've got them set up so that they will be set up that you can read the tack logo on either side when it's clipped on the string. You'll just have to turn your knock until you get that. All right, folks. Uh, once again, Randy, thanks for taking time to be with us today. Tack veins. Uh, we love selling these at Lancaster archery. We sell a lot of them. They really are. The performance really is exceptional for those of you who haven't tried it yet. Uh, yeah, Randy, thanks for being here today. Absolutely. Thanks so much, guys. And thanks for all you do for, uh, for archery and for us. Um, I know that uh, y'all were a really big help for us to get started in our first year. And uh, we're going we're gonna to keep pressing forward, making sure our tolerances are as tight as possible. Um, you know, I learned customer service working there with you guys. And, you know, that's something that we're going to strive ourselves on in any way possible. You know, I will help anyone if they're willing to reach out and ask or send us an email, send us a message on one of our uh, social media platforms. We've got people that are answering those, you know, we'll be glad to help in any way we can. Awesome. Great points, Randy. Folks, that's another video from our virtual ATA 2021 set here. Stay tuned. We got plenty more coming.